Am I the a-hole for not inviting my stepmother and her daughter at my wedding? Plus updates. Original post. I, 24, female, am getting married next summer to my fiancé Joe. My mom died when I was seven. Dad married Kay four years later. Kay has a daughter, Ella, 22, from a previous relationship. Kay and Ella are easily the most entitled, spoiled, and rude people I've ever met. They never treated me like family, and Kay has done everything possible to push me away from the family. I haven't been in any family pictures since I was 14. I was never allowed on any family vacation slash activities. And as per Kay's request, my dad banned any family members from giving me any gifts for my birthday slash holidays. She always hated me, and I can't even remember all the times I cried because of the things she would say to me. Ella was the favorite child. Whatever she wanted, they would get it to her. Me? I had to work if I wanted something. School supplies? Work for them. My clothes don't fit me anymore. Work for new clothes. Ella liked to break my stuff too, and I would be grounded because I got mad at her. My last straw was when she cut all pictures ahead of mom. Dad found me crying, and when I showed him the pictures, he told me to let it go. I packed a bag and went to stay with my grandparents. I was 17. Dad never came for me, never called or texted me either. He reached out to me when I was 20, apologized and said he wanted to reconnect. I told him if he wants that, he will have to work very hard to earn a relationship with me, since he hasn't been my dad since I was 12, and in three years I haven't heard from him at all. He said he'll do anything to be my dad again. Since then, I've been low contact with him because I don't feel like he's putting enough work into our relationship. I finished college last year, and he attended a ceremony. And after that, we spent the entire weekend together bonding. It was the first time I felt like I had a dad in almost 13 years. I wanted my dad to attend a wedding as a guest, but I don't want Kay or Ella there. I talked to my dad about it, and he was okay with attending as a guest while my grandpa will be walking me down the aisle. But he was really mad when I said I will not invite Kay and Ella. His reasoning is that they are his family, so that makes them mine too, and he doesn't want them to be excluded. He then said he will not attend if they aren't invited. So I said, okay, I guess then you won't attend my wedding then. And our relationship is over since you're choosing them over me again. It is my wedding, and I don't want those disgusting people there. Please don't contact me again. Go be with your perfect little family and forget I exist. You have practice on that. Goodbye. Then I blocked his number. Some family members reached out to me and told me I should be the bigger person and maybe the wedding could be what's going to fix our relationship. My grandparents said that it's my big day and that I shouldn't have people that make me uncomfortable there. Joe and his parents agree that I shouldn't invite people that hurt me just because they are legally considered family. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the a-hole. Your wedding should be one of your happiest days of your life. Your father made his choice. You don't always need to be the bigger person anyway. But they're not even really asking you to do that. They're asking you to be a pushover and let your father and his wife and her child get their way. That's not being the bigger person, and you're so much better off without them. Opie, I hope you have a beautiful wedding, stress-free, and embrace your new family. I never understand be the bigger person. No, what's in it for me? It's always almost said to the person who has a zero wrongdoing in a situation as well. Opie didn't get any birthday or Christmas presents for years, just because stepmom didn't want it to happen and threw a fit, which is only one of the many things stepmom did. And yet somehow Opie's still supposed to be the bigger person. Do that as a 24-year-old, instead of the people who are adults and have been adults for decades. Ugh. Not day whole. Your grandparents are right. They've done nothing to deserve being invited. And why sacrifice your own happiness on your wedding day for them? Not day hall and I shudder to think of what they would do at your wedding to mess it up. Or make it about them. Yep. Opie's dad has proven time and time again that he doesn't care about anyone except his cruel wife and spoiled stepkid. The day he decided to let them bully and alienate Opie, he gave up his right to be in her life. She was generous enough to let him back in. And now he's wasting that chance. Not day hall Opie. I hope you have a great wedding with Joe and your grandparents. The people who deserve to be there. Now for the first update. The situation has blown out of proportions. Kay's family has been blowing up my phone, sending me death slash other horrible threats. And what's worse is that, they have sent the same threats to my grandparents. I had a panic attack so bad when my grandma called and told me, so I'm currently in the hospital. Joe's mom is with me, 
and Joe and his dad went to my hometown to bring my grandparents here because I'm honestly scared something may happen to them. I don't know what to do. This has turned into a nightmare. And before you suggest a restraining order, in my country, they won't give you one unless they actually hurt you. Joe's aunt has offered to have us move in with her across the country, and as much as we love our life here, we will accept her offer. A lot of people keep asking why Kay and Ella want to come to my wedding when they clearly hate me. I don't think they want to come. I think it's the fact that I don't want them there that makes them want to come. They are not used to being told no. I've had some comments saying I should expose their threats in social media, and I think I'll do that, plus tag all of them. I can update after I do that if you all want me to. Thank you for all the comments and messages. Second update. I posted all the texts alongside the backstory on Facebook and Instagram, and I tagged them all. Safe to say they aren't happy. Kay and Ella are now cut off by all her family, because apparently they didn't know about how they treated me. Kay and Ella have been lying to Kay's family for years, pretending to be good stepmother slash sister, and painting me as the witch that never accepted them and made their lives hell. In addition, my dad is offering me money to delete the post, because his friends and boss saw it. Dad's friends refuse to talk to him and his boss wants to see him first thing Monday morning. And I'm assuming it is to fire him, because Dad's job involves public relations and this is bad for their image. Now they are blowing up my phone with apologies and begging me to delete everything. My dad is blaming Kay for all of this and is considering divorcing her in the hope of saving his reputation. On another note, we accepted Joe's aunt's offer to move in with her and we are thinking of making the move to aunt's city permanent. Because honestly, I'm in love with this place, and we may even get better paying jobs here. Anyways, tonight we are going to have a small party to celebrate my dad's life being ruined. Daddy wants to divorce Kay to save his reputation, but not to save his relationship with his daughter. Kay, Ella, and dad can buzz all the way off. He should have divorced her the minute she told him his own daughter shouldn't receive Christmas presents. I can't even imagine the conversation they had where dad is like, yeah, that seems reasonable. It wouldn't have started with not giving his daughter Christmas gifts. It would have been a chain of favoring his wife and stepdaughter until by the time they got to Christmas gifts, his daughter was already alienated and he could not go along. But then he was only left with an angry, alienated daughter when his wife and stepdaughter leave. Abusers don't start off big. It sucks in both victims and neighbors. Each step was just a bit worse than the last. And Sally wasn't just enabling, he was a perpetrator too. At any point, he could have chosen his daughter, but he didn't. That is the really sad point. He could have any point done the right thing. If he had and worked for forgiveness, his daughter likely would have. But he would lose his wife and stepdaughter. Now he is choosing money and loneliness. And that choice isn't likely to save his money. He deserves all the consequences that are about to crash down on him. Most victims don't get to see the consequences crash down on their perps. I understand Opie's stepmoms and stepsister's family were lied to about how awful she was. But who sends such horrible threats to someone and their grandparents? The lies they were told have nothing to do with them being incredibly messed up people. For some reason, some people get bolder on the internet. Either because it's anonymous or because they become part of a mob. They get bolder and more confident posting and saying horrible things they'd never say out loud outside of the internet. These people have not received a short, sharp smack in the mouth with a hard fist, and believe they are immune from this traditional repercussion of acting like an a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to give up my dog for my dad's fiancé and her son? I'm really upset about this right now. I'm 17 female and my parents divorced when I was 12. It was really rough. They pretty much hate each other and still have trouble doing anything together when I'm concerned. I try not to talk about them to each other and just keep things separate. All the fighting and chaos was hard on me and was affecting my mood and schoolwork when it was all going down. So my dad felt bad and let me have a dog to help me feel better. Someone nearby had Malmute puppies. So I picked out one and his name is Tycho and he's my best friend. Even on the weeks I'm with my mom, I stop by after school every day to take him to the dog park to play and get his cuddles in. I love this dog. My dad started dating Melanie a few years ago. I don't really connect with her. We're just really different. And she's way too touchy. But she makes my dad happy, so whatever. Her son Ben, 9 male, is autistic and needs a lot of accommodations. He gets really upset and has meltdowns when things change or are done differently. 
He's also really scared of Taiko. Even though as far as I know, Taiko has never done anything to scare him. He's a really laid-back and well-behaved dog. Dad and Melanie recently got engaged. And they want to go ahead and move her and Ben in so that they can get rid of their apartment and save money. My dad told me about it and said that since Ben is afraid of Tycho and needs a stable environment at home, Tycho is going to have to go somewhere else. My mom's townhouse doesn't have a room for him and my grandparents aren't in good enough health to look after a big dog. So we have to rehome him. I admit I didn't take it very well and we had a big fight. I told him that no way was I going to give up my dog. And I'm going to college next year anyway, so they can put off the move until the spring when I can find a place to take him with me. My dad says they need to do the move over the holidays. And Ben is more important than a dog. I told him if he gives away my dog, I'll never forgive him. And that he obviously thinks Ben is more important than me too. My dad is mad because I'm making this a choice between me and his fiancé basically. Melanie's having second thoughts about the engagement since I don't want to live with them. My mom is mad at my dad and they're fighting again. And I'm afraid to leave Tycho alone because he might not be there when I get back. My aunt says I'm being childish and that my dad deserves to be happy. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your dad shouldn't have given you a dog to take it away later. However, you also need to be prepared. It isn't easy to find a place to take a large dog. If your plan is to bring him with you, you need to be working and saving money. You will likely need to rent a house or a room in a house where they let you have him. And you'll have vet bills to cover, food, etc. Agree. This is sad. But Opie should be prepared that it is going to be very, very difficult as a college student to find a place big enough for such a large dog. Yes, I have a cat and people even struggle to find rentals with them. Unfortunately, Dan likely got the dog to keep them coming over, but didn't seem to be committed to keeping the dog. Not day whole. I usually side with parents. But rehoming your dog because he can't wait six months to move his girlfriend into the house? Seems like he is choosing his girlfriend over his child. And that's a huge no-no. Melanie's son does have a right to feel safe in his own home, but that does not include forcing you to get rid of your dog. That's just not a legitimate thought to have. Maybe Melanie should have second thoughts about your dad. I like this comment because there's many good points to it. Why was it a dog and a compromise conversation happened before? Oh, there was a conversation between Melanie and Opie's dad. It went, you'll get rid of the dog, won't you? Yes, dear. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad he and his new kid can get lost? I, 14 female, have three siblings. 12 female, 11 male, 9 female. My dad also found out that he has another kid, 15 female, from before he met my mom. He and my mom got married fast. His new kid moved in, and my dad made me share a room with my 12-year-old sister so his new kid could have her own room. Something important to the story is that my dad has a temper. He would never hit us or anything, but he yells and it's scary. My mom has talked to him about it, making it hard for us to talk to him or be around him sometimes, and he always said he'd work on it, but never did. I moved in with my mom as they're divorced because I didn't want to share my room, and all of my dad's attention was on a new kid too. My dad and I still texted and called a few days a week. He then asked me to come over because he had something he wanted to tell me and he wanted it to be in person. When I got there, he told me that he started therapy, parenting classes, and an anger management thing. And he wanted to let me know, because me and him used to butt heads the most. I asked why he chose to do it now, and he said he's doing it for his new kid but still expected me to be happy about it. Like, we've been telling him to figure out how to control his temper for years, and now he's only doing it for his new kid. I told my dad he and his new kid could get lost, and I went back to my mom's house. My mom was waiting in the car the entire time. I haven't talked to him since, but he's still calling and texting me. My mom thinks I should be happy that he's finally working on getting better, even if the new kid was the reason, and that maybe I should give him a chance. But I don't want to. Am I the a-hole for what I said? Not the a-hole. What he thought he said, I'm getting better. You should be happy and praise me. What you heard, slash, he actually said, I'm getting better finally because of my other child. You weren't worth getting better for, but she is. But you should be happy and give me a cookie anyway. Tell him that. Tell him he just flat out told you his other child was worth doing the work to get better for. But you weren't, and that hurts. And that just furthers his psychologically harmful behavior towards you. 
Also, if he honestly wants to get better, he needs to work on his relationship with all of his kids specifically, and not just the new kid, and expect the other kids to be happy slightly less horrible. Y'all definitely need family therapy, on top of individual therapy. There is a good place quote that applies to this directly. If my father is truly changed, then that means he was always capable of change. But I just wasn't worth changing for. Was thinking of that exact quote while reading this. I get that people are complicated and sometimes it's not as simple as you weren't worth it. It might be more like, I wasn't at the point where I could see what I had to do. But the feeling is still perfectly valid, and the people who weren't worth it aren't obligated to maintain a relationship with a person, even though they're changing now. Yep. Usually, when we need to make a serious change about ourselves, we start putting in the work when the pain of not changing becomes more than the pain of changing. But this? This just tells me the dad cares more about a surprise kid than Opie and his other kids. And I know why. His family has been stuck with him for years. Sure, Opie's mom divorced him, but the kids were basically still stuck being around him and his problems. He didn't have anything to worry about then, because they didn't have anywhere to go. Surprise kid does. Surprise kid didn't grow up hating what he does, but ultimately having to accept being around him anyway. Surprise kid can leave. Surprise kid isn't invested. And that scares him. He's now looking down the barrel of honest-to-God consequences for his behavior and refusal to change. So now he's trying to get right real fast, in an effort to present himself in a better way than he has before. I can understand if this was the kick in the pants he needed, but damn does it look performative as heck. New kid can't leave. She was in a foster home before this, and it would probably be difficult to go back. She's just really scared of everyone, and he doesn't want her to be scared of him.